Welcome back. This is another video in the series for Portland Community College Computer Information Systems 121. I'm Al Zimmerman. This is part two of our introduction to databases. In this video, we're going to talk about how you get data into a database and how you get information out. So let's start. The basic interface to a database is called a query. Queries are uh, small snippets of code, small statements. The first kind of query inserts data into a database. There are other kind of queries, queries that create databases, uh, create tables, uh, destroy tables. But for our purposes, there's a specific kind of query called an insert query that takes data, puts it in the database. Similarly, there's queries that select data from databases. Now I use those verbs intentionally because those are actually verbs from the query language. You select particular items of information, particular records, particular attributes of those records based on some set of criteria that you choose. And the query takes that data out of the database and gives it to you. Queries are written in a language called the Structured Query Language, or SQL. There's lots of other uh, languages, but SQL is predominant these days. There are variations of SQL for different types of database vendors like Microsoft or Oracle or MySQL or Postgres SQL. But if you learn SQL in general, it's easy to pick up one of these dialects. SQL is a simple language to learn, but like most languages, it can be very complex in terms of expressing the kind of information you're interested in. So there's a good deal of tool support, um, tools that help you develop queries and test them to make sure that they work the way you intend them to. So how do you get the data to the query? How do you deliver the data, the information rather, from the query to back to the human? Well, it starts with a form. You've seen a, a million forms by now. Let's rip one off of a page and, or an application and consider it by itself. A form provides a way to enter values for the attributes for a single entity. Each field in the form corresponds to an attribute in the entity and whatever mechanism you're using, the application or the web, uh, the form helps you take that value that you've entered and put it, give it to a query and have it put into the database. Now you can also use forms to organize the, the criteria for queries. So forms also help you control queries as well as providing data for queries. On the other side, when you output a particular record, you can display that record in a form with each of the fields of the form containing the value for their corresponding attribute. Now if you want to look at more than one entity, you want to arrange them in what's called a report. Reports display selected attributes for a selected set of many entities. You typically only want to see the, the attributes that are relevant to the question you're asking, and you set the criteria for the query to only select the particular records that give you useful and relevant information. This is the primary means for you to transform data into information. You've organized it using entities and attributes and relationships, and now you use queries to select just the relevant information and organize it in a relevant fashion so that when it comes out, it's exactly what you need to know. These are the simple ways of getting information in and out of a database, but they're not the only ways. For example, a very common use of information coming out of a database is a web page. If you've ever been to Amazon, every web page you see on Amazon is being written on the fly 
based on information from a database. It's formatted up using a template and displayed to you using a web server and a web browser. Now even cooler than this is uh, what's called an API, an Application Programming Interface, which is a, a set of software libraries that allow other pieces of software to interact with your database via your queries. For example, if you have a mobile app that goes and gets data from some server somewhere, like, I don't know, a weather app, it talks to the API, which then formulates up the appropriate query, gets the result, and returns it to the mobile app via this application programming interface. This is very powerful, very powerful stuff, because then it allows you to combine data from different places and use it as you would see fit in your application. Well, APIs come in all forms and all shapes and sizes, and they're useful from different languages. Um, but they're also useful from a business standpoint. If you can make your data available to other products, then you become more valuable to your customers. So APIs are a big deal. So anyway, to summarize, this is the ecology or the ecosystem or the environment of your database. There's a lot of stuff here, and we're only scratching the surface. Because this is an introductory course, we're going to focus on just four of these things. The database itself with its tables, uh, the queries. We're going to use some interesting tools to make the query development easier for you. We're going to make some forms both in an application called Microsoft Access and in raw HTML so you can see how they go together. And we're going to generate some interesting reports for our database. Again, we're using a, a program called Microsoft Access because it provides a very convenient way to learn all of these aspects of databases without having to make them from scratch yourself. Uh, later on, if you're good at Access, you'll be able to use it to take big sets of data and combine them and, well, answer interesting questions with relevant information. That's what it's for. So that's it for this video. Next, we're going to talk about the database development process using our old friend, the System Development Lifecycle. I'll see you in the next video.